okay welcome back um, so just to recap uh, for what we did in the last uh, video um, we saw the aliasing effect and the down sampling right and we saw that well um, as long as you down sample um, up to the point where the signal is not overlapping over each other at that point up to that point it is okay but in the moment it overlaps you down sample it for so much that it, it overlaps this image overlaps with the original spectrum in that case we are going to see the aliasing effect okay and we saw that well the spectrum is going to lose its shape basically when during the process of aliasing so now um, we can look at some of the um, numerical examples um, so I've got a small code which is same as what we had done before so I'm going to change some of the parameters here and we'll try to examine okay so the originally we had seen that um, originally so um, if you remember what we had done was we had a band limited spectrum right and it has uh, if you do not understand this it doesn't matter so basically the whole idea is it generates a band limited spectrum and it gives me back the time domain signal okay and um, what I'm doing is I'm sampling at certain rate and I'm going to take the down sampling factor by 2 okay so this 800 times F is my original 1x rate okay and my FS2 is the down sample version of my original uh, that is basically X by 2 and then I'm examining its time domain and the frequency domain uh, plots basically it's very uh, straightforward code um, but let's try to examine let us run this part and so this is my octave console and uh, let's run this Okay, so we had seen this before in our previous examples uh, videos that um, uh, as long as my spectrum is far away um, from the fault line, then it doesn't matter. So here, for example, if you see, um, I have got 800 points here, FFT, right? And now I have got 400 points because the original time domain samples have got reduced by a factor of two. And so um, this point number 400, yeah, this is FS by 2, it's basically the fault line and it is absorbing um, technically 200 points from here and 200 points from here because it moves in this direction. So this is what we have. And then we are also seeing that, well, um, the integrity of the spectrum still remains, okay? The integrity of the spectrum is maintained. You are not losing any of the components during this process. Now, let us try to see what happens when you downsample even further. Okay, so I'll close these plots and let's see. Uh, let's play around with this and see um, if any of the things that we had seen in our previous uh, videos it does make sense. Okay, so I'm doing downsampling by factor of 4. Let's say downsampling by factor of 4 and let us learn this um, uh, thing again and let's see what happens. Okay, so okay, so we are right at the threshold now. So as you can see here, um, I have got originally 800 points, right? And I'm downsampling by factor of 4. So 800 by 4, that gives me how much? 200 points, right? So this um, fault line is sitting here. It is going to absorb um, how many points? 800s, 200, 600, right? So it is going to absorb 300 from here, 300 from here. It's moving in this direction. Since all these points are zeros, the effect of the absorb absorption is not basically visible, right? So um, we'll only come to know whether it is absorbing uh, is when it actually accumulates the points around the fault line which we will see when we downsample it even further so as you can see here the spectrum has just at the threshold okay they are at the point of overlapping but they are still not overlapped yet okay so now let's downsample even further okay so um, let's take the downsampling uh, factor as 5 and so everything else remains the same I'm just playing around with the downsampling factor and trying to examine um, what happens so now this downsampling factor is 5 and if I run this spec uh, code again and let us see what happens okay um, uh, what has happened let's see okay so now this is what we have got um, okay let's close these figures and uh, do it again um, it seems they have overlapped over each other so uh, it will not be perfectly clear so let's do it again right so let's run this thing again right so now I have the spectrum now as you can see now you can see the strange thing what is happening here I am moving so far basically technically if you see here how many points I have um, I'm down sampling it by factor of 5 right so it is 800 by 5 and as you can see that I have moved so far that now I'm actually absorbing some of the points here and some of the points here okay and they get absorbed and this is what it looks like this is how it looks like so the original points uh, the points which are sitting here the integrity of these points will remain as it is okay that's only the point at which I'm finding the aliasing effect is going to uh, um, the 
the point at which I am seeing the overlap is going to show the aliasing effect okay and uh, so you might ask that hang on a second my spectrum has got changed so the my time domain signal also has to be changed right and yes um, it is true the time domain signal also gets changed so if you downsample so much that um, it actually changes the shape of your spectrum itself okay so this is how the original uh, signal looks like and this is the downsample version of it so if I try to zoom this guy and try to see if we can um, uh, let me zoom this okay so this is how it looks like and let me try to zoom this guy as well so um, okay so see the difference between these two okay it has lost the shape of the spectrum completely um, not exactly completely but the, some of the some of the points will be maintaining its integrity and some of the points we are losing so as you can see here the part of the sync function right it looks more like a triangular and then um, so as you can see and because this is because of the aliasing effect and this this is clearly visible in the frequency domain okay and this is what we call as the aliasing now um, what we'll do is um, in some of the or I would say in many of the uh, textbooks they call that um, when you do the downsampling there is a kind of a stretching effect okay so so far we have not addressed that part what is actually the stretching effect there is nothing called stretching as such but when you try to compare the downsample spectrum with the original spectrum at 1x and when you try to map on top of each other then you will see that the effect of kind of getting stretched because if you see here the number of points that I have are just about like 106 70 or odd points which I am having right 160 odd points I am having so if I want to map this 160 points on 800 points which is my original spectrum somehow I have to pull the spectrum so that I can uh, overlap and map it on top of each other okay so that is what people call it as a stretching effect but there is no such thing as uh, stretching okay so this thing you need to remember and uh, let us try and do something if we can do the stretching here as well um, I think I have got a part of the code um, which does that but let me examine this um, yeah okay so this part is commented out so here um, what I'm doing simply is um, as you can see y2 right um, what I'm doing is the original downsample signal I take the Fourier transform and then I upsample it upsample means I'm simply stuffing the zeros um, uh, at the points at which I, I'm not expecting the spectrum and then I'm going to uh, overlap uh, these two things this is the spectrum of the original 1x signal this is the spectrum of the downsample signal which I have upsampled in such a way that I will simply put zeros at the point where I'm not having the signal points okay so um, just to make it clear okay let's um, let's run this and check okay uh, if it causes more confusion to you guys um, okay so let's run this guy again and check okay so I'll close these uh, figures let me close these figures and um, try it fresh okay so everything else remains the same right so let us see okay so now as you can see um, this is how it looks like so this is the original spectrum okay this is the original spectrum at 1x and this is my down sample version of it and can you see there can you see that stretching effect as if it is it has got pulled from both the ends so that it can fit on top of the 1x rate so this is what we call as a stretching effect but there is no such thing as stretching this thing you need to remember there is no such thing as stretching in the real life it is just the when you do the one-to-one -one comparison on top of each other this is how it is going to look like okay so um, I hope uh, uh, this um, effect of aliasing and how actually the aliasing occurs is clear to you um, in our next video we'll look into the upsampling part okay and um, we'll also try to derive some um, analytical equations um, once we are at the point where we discuss the Fourier transform because um, to do the analytical derivation of all these things we need to have the understanding a basic understanding of the Fourier transform so once we are through the Fourier transform then we'll also have a look into the analytical derivation okay so hope you have enjoyed these videos and I will see you in the next video with the upsampling